Season two has been nothing like season one of the Northeast State's only challenge. In season one, we made it all the way to the AFC Conference Championship. The start of season two, well, you can clearly see we went one and six. Matt Ryan dropped off a cliff. Tyree Jackson is now our new starting quarterback as we try to get something going, at least maybe get some of the young guys in. That's probably what the plan is going to be this episode, is get a lot of the younger guys in, get them developing. Anyone who probably isn't going to see much progression for the remainder of their career, probably not going to play a whole lot the remainder of this season. So, with that being said, Washington Commanders will be the first game. We will watch some of it, because they're 2-5. and five. They're not having a great season either, and we haven't watched a win yet. So, potentially, they might be the ones to help us do that. In our division, though, we've lost to everyone already once. We have the Dolphins in Week 10. That'll be the next one. And they're atop of our division 4-2. and two. The Bills 4-3. and three. And then the Patriots below 500 at 3-4. and four. But we are a far way away of squeaking into any sort of playoff contention. So, most likely we'll be ending Season 2 in this episode. We'll do a lot of simming. We'll talk about some of the draft players when we get more information on them. After Week 11, we'll be the best time to kind of take a look there. But let's go ahead, jump into this one against the Commanders and see if we could actually watch our team win a game. Starting on offense, and I did make the changes to the depth chart. It's primarily going to be the young guys over a lot of the older guys who may be a lot better than some of the young guys. But at this point, we're one in six. Doubt the season's going anywhere. So let's try to get some development for some young guys. See if any of them can actually, you know, stand out on offense. We're going to see Bo Melton, uh, Tristan Jackson, both of those at receiver. Tyree Jackson at quarterback not getting very far. We'll still see both of Dylan and Pacheco. As for the offensive line at left guard, Elijah Wilkinson, he got subbed out with a rookie in Oliver. So we'll see if anyone can make plays, but right now it's primarily the commanders making the plays with that interception intended for Raymond. I think we'll maybe get into about two different games today, but the most of the episode will probably be uh, talking about the draft, maybe looking for potential guys to trade for as an option. I don't think there's a whole lot that we don't already have, but I'm sure we might find a couple guys who maybe could be some role players for us. But yeah, that's kind of what we're going to do today. Watch a few games, try to just see if any of these young guys can make some big plays, but mostly get ready for next season. We do have two new starters on the defensive line in this game. Westerman, I believe is his name, at the right end. He was a draftee. And then Pryor at rush DT, but it's Allen getting the sack here. We'll actually get the stop on Justin Fields. We'll force a punt. And we'll probably do something similar to the last game of last episode, where we'll, we'll, we'll watch the offense if we get into plus territory, because clearly not doing it on this drive. And then defense will watch some if we get if they get in towards the red zone. Basically, just want to see if any big names pop up or some of the young guys pop up. All of the young linebackers are playing as Isaac Yitam gets the interception. He did get the start this year after how was it? It was one of the McCourty brothers retired. So he got the start. And he's been fairly solid on the outside. Tyree Jackson with a nice read option run there gets the first down. But I definitely feel like we have a lot more younger developing guys over on defense than we do on offense. And some of the ones on offense, I don't know if they'll ever really get into a spot where they could be a rotational guy. But another good scramble here, Tyree Jackson. Still using the same playbook as what we use with the uh, Commander's Replacement Squad. Hand this one off down the middle. Pacheco has some space with a juke that he did not need. Should have just stuck the foot in and got downfield. Would have probably got more yardage out of it. Second and six, though, so a gain of four. Of two receivers down to the bottom. Will be another run down the middle. Dylan this time. We'll get about two, maybe three. With a bunch down to the bottom, one up top. In shotgun, we sit with Tyree Jackson. Will be a rollout pass fumbled. We will jump on it. Maintain possession for at least an attempt at a field goal. I believe that was Arden Key who forced the fumble. 
That rollout pass, I think that might just be good for when you're actually playing. As that one will go through the uprights, we'll jump ahead three to nothing. Still waiting to see if some of these defensive young guys are going to make some plays. All the safeties have been subbed out for the younger guys, as I said, the linebackers. The uh, first round, was it first round? The first, no it wasn't, it was the fourth round, I think. The first corner that we took, he is starting on the outside in the two cornerback sets. And then when we go out to nickel, he is dropping in as a sack for Don Westerman. There is one of the young guys making a play on third or second and something to... It doesn't matter. First down, Darren Waller inside the 20. I guess we could go ahead and jump in. That was what I said we would do. But yeah, Westerman playing at right end, both rush and non-rush. And then we do have Pryor at rush DT, who is also a young man. We'll see if any of them, you know, make some plays. Westerman wears 97, Pryor 96. In the nickel for the linebackers, we do have McDuffie and... Trying to remember who the other one is. Either way, they're two young guys. The rook, uh, yes, yeah, the rookie, um, Riddick. He wears 55. He's very much a run stopper, not so much uh, pass cover, but he needs snaps. He needs the chance to get better as they go with a read option. Not going anywhere. That's McDuffie was the stop at the goal line. As they'll come out with trips down below. We bring the double A gap. Are we blitzing? No. We sit. Read option once again, sliding down into the end zone. Now, can we get a touchdown? Yeah, that's something we haven't done as Matabuke gets a sack. Shout out to the Texas only state challenge we did. Fourth and seven, we punt the ball away. So the offense really not moving very well. At least a penalty there and an interception for the rookie. Way to go, Collins. And that is exactly why we decided to make that change. At least these younger guys are going to get some XP and develop with play. Because they're going to make plays eventually. As Dylan will get us in, we will finally take a lead in this game up 10 to 7. Now, can we continue to see some good plays? Second and eight, a minus two there. Wish we saw who got the tackle for loss. But another interception for another young guy. This time free safety Cam Lewis. Apparently, this is what we needed to do all along, was just put out the young guys. Trips up top, one down below. Tyree Jackson in pistol will go with a draw. Dylan down the middle with some open running room inside the 10 with a nice powerful finish to the run. And then Pacheco will Pacheco in with three up top. I think still that one down to the bottom will be a pass. Tyree Jackson dumping it off to Pacheco who will eat a shoulder. We'll get two out of it. Two of five for six yards on the day for Tyree Jackson. Not great, but it's fine. We're up right now as Dylan down the middle. We'll get an extra couple yards. And on third and goal, we'll sit in pistol. Two up top, one to the bottom. Dylan the running back. Will we hand it off? No, we'll go with a pass. Well, the draw, not draw, drag that goes to Bo Melton for the touchdown. Hear that a lot in the commander's replacement squad. He's joining us here in the Northeast. And just like that, we've opened up a two-score lead. Best we've seen this entire series, or entire season, I should say. I was about to say series, but we played really well that first season. Second season hasn't gone the same way as Commander's moving the ball here inside the red zone. Under a minute left here before half. They're trying to claw their way back in. They've had two big turnovers that have cost them a lot. Justin Fields, the quarterback, has been a little inaccurate, or we maybe we've just made some really good plays. But considering pretty much the only incompletions he's had have been the interceptions, I would say accuracy probably hasn't been the problem. Maybe just decision-making. As that pass was a little bit inaccurate. Second-hand goal. Two receivers to the bottom, including a tight end just off the bottom of the line. Fields in the pocket, going to roll to the top. Alton Robinson will force a throw away. Now third-hand goal with... Either three or four down to the bottom. They're tight end up top. Fields in the pocket will go underneath, and they'll get a few out of it, but not a whole lot. But they will settle for the field goal to at least make it a touchdown game. Kicking just inside the 12 would be about a 22-yarder. That one is up and good. Now with two timeouts and 16 seconds, offense decides to run it into half. That works out fine, I guess as we have to kick off. So defense will need to do their job to hold on to the lead. 
Five yard penalty to start us off doesn't help. First down gain there by Hawkins. Another five more yards, second and five, seven yards Robbie Anderson. Another seven yards Hawkins, There's a lot of seven happening. Five yards Hawkins, a lot of running for sure for them. Surprised they're not letting a lot of running happen with Justin Fields. Third and 11, pass thrown away. Do they go for the field goal? They do, and Myers misses. So we'll take over close to midfield. Two-yard rush by Dillon. Then a penalty by Quay Walker will set us up at the 50. We'll go ahead and, and start simming a little bit. I want to get into the fourth quarter here. Third and two, not good enough. Fourth and two, we lose three yards. Apparently we went for it, so not great. Sinclair will then lose two. Three-yard rush fields, third and ten, throw away. So a stalemate so far in the second half. Two and a half minutes left in the third. As they did a pretty good job of booting us deep. Again, we don't move anywhere. They haven't they haven't moved anywhere, but now that I say it, watch them go for about 56 yards. No, okay, or six. I got the six part right. Another throw away. Neither side moving the ball very well here the second half. It's been primarily defense, third and six. 10-yard penalty, that's not going to help us out. Go ahead and punt that one on back. Commanders with probably their best field position they've had in a while. Third and one, Fields converts. First and 10, knocked away by McDuffie. Second and 10, minus four. Third and 14, a sack Alton Robinson. And they should be out of field goal range. They do punt. Again, what can we do on offense? Jeff Smith, first time I feel like I've seen him today. Sack Nick Bosa. Second and 17, three yards. Third and 15, 14 yards. I want us to go for this. I mean, we have Hughes check on the roster. Might as well use him. So, full back dive here on fourth and inches. Works out pretty well. The line does what they need to do. And that'll convert, keeping our drive alive. Again, jumping back on into the quicker sim. With about four minutes left, we have a lead. Murphy Bunting knocks the ball away. Third and six. We get four. Want to go for it again. Tristan Jackson, the potential receiver here. We could also hand it off, and let's go ahead and do that. Apparently not. We're going to keep it, but Jackson breaks to the right-hand side, has space, and will dip out of bounds. A late hit. He stepped out before contact was made, but no flag comes down. But with us down to the 18, let's continue watching here. A bunch up top will be a handoff down the middle. Dylan with some space, a lot of space. A great block there by Jeff Smith, and we'll go up two touchdowns. Not a lot of time left in this one. Now let's just see if the defense go ahead and hold it. Under three minutes left, we're up 14 points. We don't have to do anything crazy, just do the little things right and we should be fine. Zero yard gain there, which we just saw as we hit the two minute warning. Four yard rush, third and six, they get 13 with Darren Waller. Four more yards, Brandon Cooks. They definitely have some good guys. They should be playing better than what they are. Hawkins with 13 inside the 10. Throw away. Less than a minute left on the clock. Touchdown for Zacchaeus. But they need the extra point. What should they get? Now they need an onside recovery, which they do not get. Now can we just go ahead and run this one on? Nine yards on the first one will definitely help us out. Second and one will be game. We win our first watch game. Surprisingly... It comes with most of the young guys, the backups, getting the start. And I think a big part of it is the three takeaways that set us up for two easy touchdown... I'm pretty sure they were touchdown drives. At least you'd sure hope so, because they were really close to the end zone. Now, so far this episode, we're 500. Against the Bengals, we lost 35-14. Against the Dolphins, 45-23, another loss. But then the Eagles, we won 35-28. Now, it was not a great game for Tyree Jackson against the Bengals. Three interceptions on 220 passing yards. Only completed 52% of his throws. Rushing, though, not a bad day for Dylan. 4.3 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Did have one fumble. And the receiving game was, you know, just spread out amongst a handful of players. Defensively, though, not a bad day for Isaiah Duffy. Led the team with 11 tackles. We did only have two tackles for a loss, though. One by Duffy and one by Allen. But we did have three sacks, so not awful. Allen with one and a half, one for Robinson, then half for Khalil Mack, who came back from a practice injury in this game. So then he got the start versus um, Westerman, who got the start in the rest of the games. Against the Dolphins, Tyree Jackson had a better game. 277, two touchdowns, one interception, completed 61% of his throws. Rushing game, 
was okay. Tyree Jackson, 3.4 yards a rush. Only 2.7 for Dylan, who did have a touchdown, but another fumble. Hunter Long, though, big day receiving. 86 yards on six catches for a touchdown. Khalif Raymond also had a touchdown. Riddick, the rookie linebacker, led us in tackles this time with 12. Had two tackles for a loss with Alton Robinson and then a bunch of other players with one. However, no sacks. Now in the game we won against the Eagles, Tyree Jackson, 216, two touchdowns, one interception, and completed 75% of his throws. Dylan, much better game, 7.5 yards a rush with a touchdown. Jackson only ran the ball eight times, 14 yards, not great. Pacheco, four of nine, also not great, but he did get in the end zone. So there's that. Also, no fumble for Dylan. Receiving Bo Melton, 75 on seven and a touchdown. And Hunter Long, 61 on four and a touchdown. And Alton Robinson and McDuffie tie for lead tackler with eight. Alton Robinson had two tackles for a loss, one for Collins, Westerman, and Rogers. And only one sack, Alton Robinson. But we did get two interceptions, one for Collins and one for Dennis. Now we're here in week 12. We have a late bye in week 14. And we'll continue to sim through some more. Probably just watch the two games, the first one and then the last one. But I did want to stop and have a, a update for our prospects. And unfortunately, the quarterback, the only quarterback we've had available in either of the draft classes, was a day three. He's gone down to a potential undrafted. However, maybe there's still a chance he could potentially be better than who we already have. Doesn't have a lot of throw power, but has some speed. I would say probably similar to a Matt Ryan type of arm strength with C medium accuracy, B to C short and C to D deep. Is he going to be great? I wouldn't think so, especially with D accurate or D awareness, but potentially we end up getting him anyway. But one guy we will definitely need to pick up is Kyrie Gatewood, the receiver. 6'3", 226, 21 years old out of Boston College. A round one projection, but a top five talent. He does not come in with a lot of speed, but has great strength, jumping, solid change of direction, and pretty good agility. Acceleration isn't great either. And what did he say? 6'3", 226. I feel like it'll be a little bit small for a tight end, but he does have some really good ratings. A catch in traffic, A catching, A stiff arm, A spec catch, and short route running. He has B awareness, ball carrier vision, break tackle, carrying, medium route running, release, injury, and did I say run block yet? Not sure, but also has B run block and A stiff arm. So he potentially could be really good and maybe would help us move downfield a little bit better, take over Tajay Sharp's position, potentially as that more physical style receiver for us, and then have um, Jeff Smith as our deep receiver, and then Cleef Raymond and well as Bo Melton as more of our slot playmaker. But there is a tight end, speaking of moving, possibly moving that uh, receiver to tight end, and Elliot Pittman out of Princeton, who's 6'5", 245, 23 years old. He's a day three guy who doesn't have tremendous speed, at least top end, might be solid with good acceleration. Strength is okay, nothing spectacular, but I'm seeing some very good ranges here. So we'll keep an eye on him as well. Hunter Long has been okay for us, but hasn't been phenomenal. And in a similar kind of step with left tackle Luke Gabriel, his, he has good size, 6'6", 333, 23 years old. He does have good to great strength, so that part's good. And he does have some decent ranges here. Pass block, B to a D, same for pass block power and run block. The run block, though, doesn't look to be great, so he probably will be a developmental guy. But still, we need some depth and on the uh, offensive line with B awareness, also really solid. Now, unfortunately, on the defensive side, not a whole lot. There was a day three DT in Kashawn Dorsett, who has D block shed and power moves and C finesse, so not looking great there. The linebackers also don't look fantastic. Mitch Dent, a field general with C to F block shed and D zone. And then we had Dwayne McGill with C to F zone F block shed. So the linebacker is not looking that great either. There maybe will be some guys with some decent attributes as for potential undrafteds. But a lot of the guys who were projected draftable don't seem to be great. Again, there's Pittman at tight end, Gabriel at uh, tackle. The receiver looks pretty 
I mean, he looks really good. For being honest, he looks really good. He's not a down the field guy. He's more of a short intermediate guy, but still can be really solid. And maybe we pick up another running back. We only really use two, so we don't need two. And David Wells, I would like to pick up just so we have another guy to develop because most likely Matt Ryan's going to retire. And then there's Dolgala as I think the only other available quarterback for us in Madden. Now everything after the Eagles game was bad. Chiefs, we lost 35-24. Bills, we lost 34-28. Bucks, we lost 38-14. Texans, 33-28. Loss and Patriots, 21-14. Loss. So we're in week 18. Has not been a great season by far. Near opposite of what we did last year, where we actually won our division, went to the postseason, all the way to the AFC Conference Championship, and we've won three games since the divisional round last season. Not good, but we will finish off against a really good offense in the Los Angeles Chargers. Their defense, about average. We're going to put in, again, all young guys. I don't care. Just put out the young ones, even if they are garbage. We're going to give them a shot. We're going to see how they play, and that's how we'll round out season two. And our day begins on offense. Very similar to the first game we watched, going to be mostly the same players. Really, only ones that have been switched out even more are the receivers, where we will see uh, Tristan, Tristan Jackson as well as uh, Bo Melton as the number one and two. We'll see a little bit of some Andy Isabella, but that pass was intended for, but uh, apparently Tyree Jackson didn't know what height he was and threw it to a guy who'd be similar height to him. So hit off the top of the cornerback's head. Third and four, we're going to roll out. Might as well just go ahead and keep running or throw it out of bounds. I guess that works. We'll punt. And we really haven't watched much of the defense this season, so we'll watch them a fair bit here today. We'll go through the first two uh, possessions, one of each side, and then go from there. But Eckler might be gone as he is streaming down the sideline. Finally, Collins will force him out as well as Lewis. But not a great first look <laughs> at the, uh, the defense there. Pryor is going to be just one of the main DTs today. He does not provide any sort of block shedding. Supposed to have some power moves, but did not see any there. Riddick will get the tackle after the five-yard gain to Eckler. So it's been all Eckler so far for the Chargers. I almost said Commanders. The Chargers offense. And they'll hand it to a secondary running back who will maybe get back to the line. Blackshear. Honestly, I don't know if that's a real guy or a draftee. Double A gap look for us here, though, as it will be a pass. We bring the blitz and did not go well. Touchdown for the Chargers. And from that poor start, we'll jump into the 50-20 sim, meaning if on offense we get past the 50-yard line, we'll watch, and on defense, if they get inside the 20, we'll watch. Third and one, we do convert, keeping the drive alive, and past the 50 we go. So we'll go ahead and jump on and see what we could do. Again, have the uh, rookie tackle actually playing at left guard as he's primarily a run blocker more so than a pass blocker. So probably just need to make that switch more permanent. But him getting out there anywhere is just going to help him develop at least hopefully. First and 10 here. Jackson in the pocket will go to the sideline catch there for Andy Isabella. Gain of four. Again, purpose of this offense is to run the ball get the ball out quickly in, in a variety of different ways and maybe we've done that we'll see when we look at these stats at the end of the uh the episode here that if a lot of different receivers are getting the ball then i would say it's working in that instance do we keep this same offense for next season who knows we'll see how the offseason does go as tristan jackson i believe gets his first catch of the series at least in any sort of watched action. With a bunch up top, one receiver down below still sitting in shotgun Tyree Jackson. Has Pacheco next to him, and we'll hand it off down the middle. Kind of stuck on our lineman, but honestly, pretty good blocking there. Pacheco averaging 5.4 yards a carry as we have trips up top, one down below. Pacheco is huffing and puffing, so luckily we don't hand the ball off to him. Tyree Jackson looking to scramble. Nice job there to get in between the linemen and into the end zone. That is how a scramble type quarterback should be running the ball. Well, at least the offense goes and ties the game up after a poor performance by the defense, their first timeout. 
Can the defense redeem themselves here? Third and four. Mechie gets the first. So, so far, not really redeeming themselves. This is a really good offense, though. As mentioned pre-game, they're, what, like an 88 or something overall? So... We definitely have to come prepared. Third and six, though, we do at least slow them down. They'll hit the field goal, go back up 10-7. With about six minutes left here in the first half. No gain on first down, love it. Gonna gain a three, third and seven. We lose three and we'll have to punt away. So, some decent start or some decent performance, some not so good. Third and one, Eckler will get eight. First and 10, a 53-yard touchdown to Mecole Hardman. Or McCole Hardman, I feel like I've heard it both ways. It's probably McCole Hardman. That sounds more accurate. Even though he was definitely in one of these state-only challenges, and I 100% called him Mecole Hardman the whole time. So, there is that. First and 20, 40-yard rush, Isabella. Second and 16, we get six. Third and 10, a sack by Trayvon Walker. So still, not a whole lot happening, at least for us. The Chargers, they're up 17-7 as they continue to be able to move the ball fairly easily on us as we hit the two-minute warning, so replays the play there. Another 17 for Mecole Hardman. See? It just... Mecole just comes out too easy. McCole Hardman. Second and eight. Throw away. Third and eight. Okay. Defense gets the stop. Where do we get the ball, though? Well, they actually could hit a field goal from there. So they'll add on some more points. 50 seconds left. I kind of want to jump in here and run a possession with the offense. So let's see what we can do with three timeouts. We're going to start spread. Trips to the right, one to the left. Going to send up the halfback screen. See if we get Pacheco out in the open. We do have a lead blocker, which we can utilize a little bit. Nice juke. Keep this going here with a little bit of hurry up. We do have all three timeouts, but kind of want to save them a little bit. Jackson has a good arm, so hopefully he can get this over the top. Really nice grab there, Andy Isabella. That we'll call a timeout after. All the way down to the 33, so at least into field goal range here. Let's actually have Isabella go on a full crossing route here as we need to get rid of it, and we don't. We'll take the sack instead. Call the second timeout. Really didn't hold down the block on that right side for very long. And that is Chris Lindstrom, who is our better lineman, as we're going to go out to Bo Melton here, who will get something. I'll have to call our last timeout. Now just eight seconds left, third and 19. So it hasn't been great since we ended up getting that Andy Isabella catch. But how about Bo Melton, one hand grab spinning. Okay, well that that's definitely even better than the Andy Isabella play and why Bo Melton should be getting some play time out there. A heck of a grab, watch this on replay. Tyree Jackson places the ball in a really good spot. Only Bo Melton was getting that but still took a heck of a play, fighting through the defender as well. Now, even though that was a great play, we are still down six points as we head on into halftime. Really solid way to end that first half. We'll see if we can do any better. 22 yards Mechie gains on first down. Then, hey, we get a tackle for a loss, then a throw away. Third and 12, good job defense. They get the stop. Now, offense, can you do something without me being in control? Three-yard game by Pacheco. Six more Andy Isabella. Third and one. We lose some yardage, but hey, let's go for it. I mean, what's it really going to hurt here if we end up not getting it? We will go ahead and flip the formation, though. I want the possible screen going to the open side. And we'll go ahead and hand this one off, or apparently not. Every time I do tell it to hand it off on that play, they seem to not do it. It is what it is. Turnover on downs. But we will go ahead and watch the defense here. They're already close to the red zone, starting at the 27. Trips up top, one down below. Allen in the backfield, chilling. We'll throw all the way up top, one play touchdown. Well, went from bad to worse. And on top of it, they're going for two. Really trying to add insult to injury here, make it a two-score game. Even though it already was, but they'll make it 14 even. You know, at least in this episode, we've seen some big plays from some of the young guys, and that was really what the focus was on, is just to seeing some of them make some good plays. Kind of thank you for the penalty there, Walker. We'll take it. Three yards, Jackson. Really hasn't done much when his time has, or when his number has been called. Third and five. Going for it again. Now let's head out here with our large frame quarterback. And how about we go with the sneak? Yep, yeah, that should work fine every time. And we'll go ahead and watch the remainder as we are into plus territory. 
Tyree Jackson, I'm really interested to see what his stats look like at the end of this game as fumble recovered by the Chargers. Yikes. Can we get any more big plays on defense without, you know, allowing any more big plays? That would be nice. Honestly, just small gains, even if they're consistent. I would take that over these 25-yard chunks as Lawan will back Lawan Taylor will back him up. Third and 10. They get eight. We'll force the field goal to start the fourth quarter. Or they'll go for it. Get the first down because I don't know what happened, but we have ball. So I'm going to take it. Maybe they didn't actually convert. That probably was it, and I just didn't read the screen very well. But let's just see. Can we finish a drive here? If we could finish within seven points of the Chargers, I'd be happy with that with this team. Hall knocks that one away. Third and nine. Throw away. We're going to have to punt. Or not. Tristan Jackson finally makes a big play. He's only had a couple short gains that we've seen. Finally gets a nice chunk. Third and nine. Andy Isabella, 39-yard touchdown. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Now, defense. Can you possibly give us a chance here late? Starts with a short, or decent run, actually, there by Eckler. And then Mechie gets 12. Going to need to probably force a turnover. That'd be the safest way to ensure we have another offensive possession. Third and three, they get eight. So Amon Ross St. Brown. Second and seven. Four more yards, another third and short, which we do get the stop, and they kick the field goal. Good. So unless we can score quickly and get the onside, Tristan Jackson will put us into plus territory, so let's just see if we could do it. But if we can get the touchdown quickly, get the onside, or potentially even just kick it deep to him and hope our defense gets the stop, we might have a shot late. Hunter will get the catch, turn in, and we'll get some. I honestly probably would have preferred him running just out of bounds there. Instead, it sends us inside the two-minute warning. With a bunch down below, the tight end up top. Single back is Pacheco. Jackson will go underneath. Going to go with Hunter Long, who cuts in again. Go out of bounds. Thank you. Do have to say Tyree Jackson is 16 of 20 on the day, which is not bad for a 65 overall quarterback. As he goes deep across the middle, caught first down Andy Isabella as a flag is thrown back behind the line. On our highest rated offensive player, Chris will back us up. First and 20 are racing a huge chunk play. We'll have to try to do it again. Jackson going up top, going to find Hunter Long, who again cuts in instead of just getting a couple extra while going towards the sideline. We'll waste about 10 seconds there, as we will snap it as quickly as we possibly can, and then throw out of a sack off the back of Lindstrom. Maybe a little bit of frustration there from Jackson, throwing it off the back of his lineman who didn't block very well for him, and also had the penalty. Third and 15. Jackson lofting that one deep. Man beat. Okay, we're still in this. Tajay Sharp really hasn't gotten much done this season after being a thousand yard receiver for us previously. But he might make things interesting here late. Now can we get the onside? If they recover this, they'll basically already be in field goal range and we kick it right to him. So now defense will have to get tackles for a loss. That's pretty much all we can allow. Or not really even just allow, but do. We don't really allow tackles for a loss. We get tackles for a loss. As they're going to motion over their tight end as a lead blocker. Down the middle, Eckler goes for a solid gain. Still stumbling around. First timeout called. Now second and five. Again, we need some tackles for a loss here. Probably doesn't help that we have a guy with no block shedding in the middle at DT. As they run right at him. But he actually did pretty well against the double team there. Second timeout called. Leaving about one, maybe two yards left here on third. And they'll come out spread. Three up top, one down below. We have the double A gap. Can we get the stop? It will be a pass and knocked down. That not only stops the clock, but keeps the first down. They will go with a field goal attempt. So a touchdown, if this is made, would be needed. Snap back, hold down, kick is up. It's looking iffy, but they're through. Or, just kidding, it was wide left. Really bad angle. I wish they would change that, but we have a chance here. Jackson going to scramble. Going towards the top. Slides down. Okay, well, let's get back to the line rather quickly. 
we know that we can hit a 60 yarder with Dixon. He did it for us in season one. We might have to see him do it again if Tyree Jackson could get around the edge, but he can't. Will be a sack. 10 seconds left, we have to call a timeout. With 10 seconds, we need to get to about the 40. Jackson's route could do it. No other way to stop the clock. We could potentially have Bo Melton go on a deep out. That would only get us to the 50. We'll see if we could get on the end of one of these. One on one, Jackson to the sideline. Can't bring it in. He had it in his hands. If only he got the catch, we could have hit the field goal. Instead, now all we can hope for is a miracle with a Hail Mary attempt. Jackson has the arm. We just need the blocking to block, which it's not doing. Jackson trying to scramble. Cannot get away from Walker. I'm pretty sure that's who. No, it's Nick Chubb, actually. Either way, it will be a loss to end the season, but at least they made it interesting. And perhaps that just goes to show this team maybe isn't as far away of turning the corner and getting back to more of what they were able to do season one with maybe just a few adjustments. Now overall, not a successful year. Offense was dead last. Defense was actually top 10, which a little bit surprising. We definitely have, so I think, some more guys on that side that are at least more consistent. But let's go through the stats. Tyree Jackson and his almost near full year start. He actually, did he end up starting the whole time? Because Madden sometimes messes with the playbook. He at least had about double of what uh, Matt Ryan had. So yeah, ends up being fine. But he ends up about 2,500, 2,600 passing yards. He had 16 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, completed 63% of his throws. Matt Ryan ended again with a lot of interceptions, tied for the amount that he had touchdowns. Just overall, the quarterback play wasn't great and hopefully that will improve next season we'll see aj dillon ended up with 851 rushing yards 13 touchdowns four fumbles pacheco six touchdowns one fumble but only 134 carries 440 yards so his average was definitely not as good as dillon tyree jackson did have a rushing touchdown three fumbles and you know not doing great there either uh, Kyle Hughes checked two rushing touchdowns. Raymond had one rushing touchdown, but fumbled twice. And Bo Melton had a rushing touchdown. Receiving, it was a step back for Raymond and Smith, but the offensive scheme changed, and they still put together a really solid season. Raymond does lead us in touchdown receptions with nine. Smith only had three. Hunter Long had four with 546 yards on 51 grabs, so at least averaged a first down a grab. Very similarly with Bo Melton, who had three touchdowns. Tajay Sharp almost entirely disappeared from the offense, which is fitting considering the receiver that we're going to most likely draft next episode. Isabella had a few, a few catches, one of them for a touchdown, but nothing too spectacular. And Pacheco really didn't get involved much in the passing game this year. The Pacheco down was gone. The brothers Lindstrom really didn't do great. 17 sacks allowed for Alex Lindstrom. That is one a game. But Chris Lindstrom, who is, again, our highest rated offensive line, highest rated offensive player, allowed 16. So really not that great. But then a big, steep drop off to Pert, who had five. Three in a short span starting for Oliver. So he's definitely not ready yet. Uh, Wilkinson, two. And Zion Johnson, really good with two. Defensively, we were led in tackles by our corner, Isaac Yidem, so that is not very good. Rodgers, 81, but also we did switch out some of our starting linebackers about midway through. So McDuffie being third, really solid. The rookie and Courtney Riddick, Riddick being uh, fourth, again, really good there. Tackles for a loss leader was Alton Robinson, who did play the full season. Zach Allen, despite missing the first, I'd say, five, six games, solid. Khalil Mack. Didn't play for the last majority of the season. Actually, he really only played the first half, so eight for him. Not bad. McDuffie had six, as well as Westerman and Pryor, the two defensive linemen rookies. Uh, Joseph Day, four. Three for Riddick and Aluakon. And then two for Milano, Collins, Dennis, Fatukasi, and Kuntz. And then one for Rogers, Ryan, Radigan, and Turi. Our sack leader in the double digit was Alton Robinson, so he's improved the last 
two seasons or the two seasons we've had him, he's improved. Uh, Zach Allen, only four and a half. Khalil Mack, only four and a half. Again, didn't play the full season. Joseph Day with one, as well as Milano and Fatu Kasi. And then half a sack for Westerman. Really disappointing. And he had a lot of time out there. He should have been able to rack up more than just half a sack. Rodgers had half, Turi half, and Will Harris with a half. Interceptions, we have a five-way tie with Rodgers, Harris, Collins, Dennis, and Lewis all having two. And then McDuffie, Riddick, Aluakon, Ryan, Yidem, and Simmons all had one. And considering we simmed most of the season, that keeps track of catches allowed. So Isaiah Rodgers allowed about two catches a game. Similarly for McDuffie, Yidem, very similarly, Riddick. Not, I mean, actually, that's closer to one a game, a little over one a game, so that's not bad. Milano, the same. Now, Aluakon and everyone else allowed less than that, so Will Harris actually did fairly decent, but I think he got subbed out most about midway through the season as well. Collins, he looked really solid. I think we need to find a way for him to continue to be a starter for us next season. He started a good chunk of the season, only allowed 11. It's not bad. Dennis, who also started a good chunk... Only allowed eight, so that's not too bad either for a young guy we're trying to develop. Similarly, also for Cam Lewis at free safety, allowed only seven. And as for Riley Dixon, perfectly fine for extra points. Field goals he did struggle this year, only 64%, and I'm pretty sure there is a kicker in this next draft class. So we'll see if Riley Dixon stays as our field goal kicker. Punning-wise, and we really don't talk about him much, but Hoffrichter. Averaged 43.2 yards a punt, downed 8 inside the 20, and had 13 touchbacks. His longest was a 71-yard punt. And to finish this episode, I just want to talk a little bit about potential moves we can make in the offseason. So that way, you can let me know if these are moves you would like to make. The highest rated player from one of the available schools that we do not already have on roster is Byron Jones. We tried to bring him in last offseason. We made him a huge offer. He wasn't interested in signing, and he went with the Raiders. Potentially, we maybe make a trade, try to bring in him, and then have Collins start opposite of him, and then go to the slot whenever we go to nickel. That's always an option. The next highest rated is Harold Landry the third. Currently with the Steelers, he's listed as a right outside linebacker, and he is a speed rusher. He has 86 finesse, 77 block shed with 78 strength. I would say more so of a true edge guy, and he has at least some ability to cover 60 zone. Potentially we bring in him. We, we have not seen a lot from Khalil Mack, at least when it's been in the watched portions. In true Sims, he's actually done fairly well. Now with Pitt, he's had some tackles for a loss and some sacks. It hasn't, you know, haven't been awful. He actually had three interceptions this last season, so that is interesting. But something we could consider to maybe do, try to bring in another edge guy. Maybe we could shake up just our, our defensive line in general. There is also safety John Johnson III. And we potentially will actually have two of our safeties retire, the ones who were playing over at Strong Safety. So we might be forced to make a move for someone like John Johnson just because we have a need at safety. Considering he has 85 speed, I feel like he would fit more so over at that Strong Safety position. But those are the only available players that we don't currently have on our roster already who are in the top 100. So there are definitely some other guys who are a little bit lower down that we might be able to bring in who could potentially be role players. If you know someone that's not on this team that you would like to see on this team, you can let me know down in the comments section below, but this is where we're going to leave it off. This season did not go very well. Three and 14, almost exact opposite of last season, but we expected that it would go downward with a lot of guys either retiring, they're overall dipping due to regression or a lot of other different factors. But just in general, it was kind of expected. So hopefully this offseason we could bring in some guys with some big impact like the receiver who is a top five talent with a round one projection. We should have no problem picking him up. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. So make sure you guys subscribe. Either scroll down below and hit the subscription button or just tap my bear icon in the bottom right. But make sure you hit the bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. 
This series posted every Wednesday and Saturday. On Monday and Thursday, I have the Commander's Replacement Squad series. And then Tuesdays and Fridays on FIFA 23, we have our My Player Career, our Noob to Pro, where, you know, we're not doing too bad considering I hadn't played FIFA since FIFA 14 and then obviously FIFA 23. So make sure you guys check out all the Series 6 videos every week. And until next time, where we really need to find a way to improve this team, we'll see you then.